Hi, this video is about scroll animations and the Intersection Observer API. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use this simple API to create scroll animations on your website. So that's animations like this, where the elements appear as you scroll down the page. Scroll animations like this are a great way to enhance the user experience and make your website feel more interactive. And with the Intersection Observer API, which I'll introduce to you in this video, we can make the process a lot simpler to implement. The Intersection Observer API allows you to easily detect when an element is visible in the viewpoint and trigger animations or other actions as a result of that. It's a powerful tool that can be used to create all kinds of scroll animations, from simple fades to more complex animations using CSS transforms. In this video, I'm going to be creating an animation that fades in and moves down as the element appears. You might have seen something similar like this on the web. It's quite a popular way of making things appear as you scroll to them. Well, this is how to make it. Here we have an HTML page that just has a title and then some section tags with images inside them. And between those, we've got these paragraphs of text. Now I've put some basic CSS at the top here, but mainly just to add margins to these elements so that they're separated vertically on the screen. And I've done that. So if you look at the resulting web page, you can see here it forces the sections down below the fold. So we have to scroll to read these bottom pieces of text. Now let's design some CSS that can be applied to one of these section tags to make it appear in a nice animated way when it's been scrolled to. For this, I'm going to create a class called scrolled. So I'll put dot scrolled in the styling at the top and then add some CSS for when it's invisible. I'm just going to say opacity zero and then I'm going to use the transform property to translate it up by 20 pixels. The next thing to do is to create an animation that will be applied to these elements to make them appear onto the screen. So just below here, I'll define some keyframes. The first keyframe is going to be applied at the start of the animation. So I'll put 0% here and then copy the styles that we entered above. So opacity and position. The next part of the animation is going to be the end state. So the position here will be 100%. And in this one, I will be increasing the capacity to one and the transform back to zero pixels. Now I'm going to go back up to the class definition and add this in as an animation. The word forwards here means play the animation once and then leave it in 100%. So don't loop the animation or anything like that. So now we have a CSS class defined. And as soon as we add this class onto an element, it will kick off the animation sequence and it will display the element in a nice way onto the page. We can test this out by going into DevTools and just manually adding this class onto one of the section elements. So let's find the section element and just in DevTools, type in class equals scrolled. And as you can see, as soon as I add this class, the element appears with a nice fade in animation. I can delete it and then we can add it again and you can see it appearing every time we add this class. Right, the next step is to add some JavaScript that will automatically append this scrolled class name when that section element has been scrolled down on the page and it's become visible. And this is where the Intersection Observer API comes into play. The Intersection Observer API is a JavaScript API that allows you to asynchronously observe changes in the intersection of a target element with a parent element. So it's very handy when we need to detect when an element becomes visible in the viewport. The API works by creating an Intersection Observer object with new Intersection Observer. And that object takes a callback function as its first argument in the constructor. This callback function will be called whenever an element being observed intersects with the viewport. The callback function has these two arguments, entries and observer. And I'm going to create mine just as an arrow function like this in JavaScript, but you could obviously pass in a reference to a function if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Entries here will be an array of the elements being observed and each element will have a property on it called in is intersecting. So I'm going to filter the array and I'm going to only look at the elements that have this is intersecting set to true. So this will filter the array to just the ones that are currently intersecting. And then we can call for each on these um, and these will be the elements that have been scrolled to. So if you remember from the testing we just did, we want to add this CSS class called scrolled to the element once it's scrolled into view. So in this callback here, I'm just going to do entry.target.classList.add and then the name of the class. 
I'm also going to call it unobserve here because after the animation class has been added, we don't really care about observing this element anymore after that. So that's the observer set up. The last and final stage is to link this observer up to the elements that we want to observe. So what we're going to do is document.querySelectorAll and we're just going to get all of the section tags on the page. You could of course use a um, class name here to identify which things you want to uh, observe, but we're just going to say observe every section tag and then for each of those we're going to uh, put them into an array and then observe them using the observer. So here it's being tested out. You can see, refresh the page, and then as we scroll down, these cat pictures, which are inside the section tags, these are appearing as we get scrolled into view. And just do all that again, so refresh the page, and you can see the same thing happen again. In this tutorial, we've seen how to use the Intersection Observer API to add a CSS class onto an element when it's scrolled into view. There's a lot more you can do with the API though. You could use it for a wide range of use cases. You could use it for lazy loading images, or you could use it for something like infinite scrolling. It'd be quite good for application of that. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you feel ready to go out and experiment with the Intersection Observer API in your own projects. If you've got any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to Train to Code on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.